Hello, good morning. Um, my name is Aleš, I come from Slovenia, live in Ljubljana, and I'm always amazed when I come here and don't understand a single word. Um, but you know, there are some words which are actually the same. So, um, machka, for example, yeah? doesn't have anything to do with this presentation. <laughs> but next time when you drive through Slovenia to Italy and you see a cat, you will know. Yeah? So, um, why should you and every, anyone actually today be interested in the infrastructure? hardware infrastructure. Um, I think that previous two uh, keynotes were very good introduction to, 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 to reasons. Yeah? Why to actually be even interested and think about what's running down there. Each of you, almost, okay, have a phone right now on the desk. Yeah? <laughs> so you do generate and consume data which is somewhere in the cloud, in the internet somewhere and you also generate it. It has to be stored somewhere. So it's totally different compared to, well, 20 years ago, as we just saw very <laughs> beautiful examples just, just before. Yeah? I'm furious about my daughter. She's now 18, and uh, I mean, that's all that she has. Friends are here. Yeah? Um, so things changed dramatically, and infrastructure has to change with it. It simply doesn't work the way it used to work 20 years ago, or 10 years ago even. Um, okay, so um, let me tell you what's, how do we, oops, where's this? What is Lenovo role in all this, um, in all this world? And I'll go into a few more details through, through, this, through, through this presentation. Okay, so our uh, primary goal and role is uh, to be provider of the best possible underlying infrastructure, and that's hardware. Everything that we spoke today about, we heard about and we'll hear later, <laughs> runs on something. It does not run, run in the air. Yet. It's called cloud, yeah, but there's hardware uh, down there. There are servers, there's storage, there's network. You, you have to have it. You must have it. You cannot run without that. So our goal is to make the best possible one. The most secure, the most reliable, the most easy to use, uh, the most flexible, name it. The most compatible. And that's Another thing, yeah, we want to make our hardware the most suitable fit for any purpose you, 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 you can imagine. So make it compatible and test it and, uh, well, everything, support it for various solutions that make business sense for, 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 uh, for you. Um, so there are various areas that we can focus on, uh, like from analytics, um, business data analytics to, to high performance computing, and then there are many infrastructure uh, solutions that we also focus on. Cloud, top right, yeah? Um, and that's where the software-defined idea actually comes from. It doesn't come from just you know, nowhere or so somebody said, oh, let's make it a cloud, yeah? There's a good reasons for that, yeah? And um, today we see several really big cloud providers that uh, are very successful because they offer flexibility, agility, and very often also low, lower price. Yeah? So Amazon is such an example. Yeah? A very good one. And the, the one that we try to, I mean, many, many other companies try to replicate and, 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 and copy and uh, provide alternatives to it. Um, Software-defined world is also expanding a lot. And this is, again, because of these cloud solutions. So it's not so much about hardware anymore, it's about software taking control. This software still has to run on hardware, so we want to make sure that our hardware is the best fit for these software solutions. Uh, there's many of them, yeah? Many of them were startups a few years ago. And in, it's interesting how fast many of them were um, accepted and adopted and are now used in a very critical uh, enterprise environments. Well, the title of this um, presentation said Software Defined Data Center. What does it all mean? Yeah? It just means that whatever you have in a data center is somehow controlled by software. It's not so easy. Yeah? I mean, today we're used to have uh, servers with storage and some networking switches, and each of these things have to be managed somehow and operated by specialized people. It's not simple. It, the bigger it is, the more complicated it gets. You probably have same experience. For small ones, fine, easy, you know, you can do it, you know, no problem. When it grows, it gets hugely complex and complicated. And maybe doesn't even fit the needs anymore. So we, we, we have to have alternatives. So our focus for the software defined at the center is going in three ways. 
for the fully integrated products um, like Microsoft Azure Stack, which is coming in a few months, um, VMware-based or OpenStack. So choice is yours. We, we want to make sure that we have the hardware suitable for it. And pre-integrated, that's also coming in a month, let's say, the formal announcement. Um, okay, I borrowed this slide from Gartner. I think it's great. <laughs> it's really great, and it's, it gives a good reasons and examples why is this software um, uh, initiative even happening. Yeah? Traditionally, in a data center, in enterprise data center, we have servers and storage connected together somehow. Traditional storage, block, object, whatever, yeah? um, file storage. It does not fit the needs and requirements of the high, um, these uh, hyperscale uh, cloud providers, cloud service providers. Amazon does not have any storage whatsoever. There's nothing there. There's no, I don't want to name, name anybody, yeah? It's no sun storage there. Same with Facebook, same with um, uh, Google. If Baidu, you know, this Chinese, Alibaba, they don't use any storage. It's all software-based, and they made it themselves. They developed it. And now this technology is coming back to, well, everyday life. Because it's really good. It proved as very, very useful, successful, cheaper, more, much more flexible, and it grows with your needs. And that's exactly what these guys wanted. So you, now, and now you have a choice. You can have a choice of combine things or just do one of the things. It's very difficult to decide which one do you want, but there's a choice. And um, well, there are people who can maybe, you know, speak about this thing and help you decide. Um, SDX here in the middle of the chart, yeah? Software defined everything. Yeah, that's coming down, yeah? And the, the in interesting thing here, at least in my opinion, yeah, is that so uh, storage is the, the guilty part here. The most problematic one. Storage did not cope with requirements of these big guys. Computing power and virtualization, yeah, that's all, that's fine, it's proven, it works. Storage does not simply does not, because it's limited in size, it's limited in capacity, and also in, a, in a, uh, uh, fault tolerance. Usually you have two, maybe four controllers, Well, one fails, you lost this much of performance, and high availability, pot potentially. So um, that's why software technologies are taking over. So replace traditional storage with something which is installed, move software logic from storage box to a standard server. Just take any x86 server, install so software on it, which will then perform as a storage, perform the storage function. And then you have several variations again, because you can have it, obviously, as file and block storage, or have it as an object storage, or so data storage, or you can have it as a management type of storage, virtualization, virtualized storage. So still use the old storage that you have, but use like IBM SVC or EMC VPlex kind of solution, but, but based on pure storage, a software which runs on standard server. Next step, further step further, is to combine computing applications, so computing power, VMs, with storage in the same server. And that's what we call it hyper-converged. And here we have eight and other players, right? Um, Nutanix is one of them. That's the one that we work mostly with, or primarily, but it's not the only one. I'm going to talk about Nutanix a bit later because they were the first on the market with this um, kind of technology. They're still leading the um, hyperconverged um, market, and um, they have good technology, really. So, for the, um, just briefly, software defined storage, so storage only. Yeah? We provide three different uh, solutions. We offer them as the appliance, so we sell this software from other vendors, preload it on our machines, we support it, um, and uh, as I said before, it's not suitable for very small uh, environments. For that, as simple, it's okay, whatever we've had so far, yeah? But when the requirements grow, then you need to think about maybe, you know, alternatives. So software-defined um, block file storage based on Nexenta uh, software that we have, and then the object storage, which is fully compliant and compatible with Amazon technologies. So that's S3 as a standard underlying. Um, and data core for start, uh, storage virtualization. So it's a totally different purpose, but it is software-defined. Um, 
I don't want to go into too many details here. I mean, this is all enterprise class, yeah? It's all enterprise class. So whatever you expect from storage, it's here, yeah? Snapshots, replication, the, the security, uh, the duplication, the um, compression, and these kind of things. It's all here, yeah? So <laughs> no worries about that. And it's already proven. It works in real life. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Hyperconverged technology, that's now replacing everything that you have that are being used so far. So it is disturbing, really. It's a disturbing technology. It replaces traditional server storage, sun, sun network, um, with a, just simple servers. It, and it works like this. It's an example of Nutanix, but it's true for all other similar solutions, being, being VMware vSAN or Microsoft or SimpliVity or whatever it is. Yeah? They all work in a similar way. So there's a logic installed on a, every server in this cluster, which then, and this, well, in Nutanix case, it's called controller, VM. They communicate uh, with each other. And uh, it's, so each, machine is fully aware of what's happening elsewhere in the other ones. Everything is distributed. There is no single source of something. There's no, there is no database. Actually, it is, but it's distributed <laughs> across all nodes. So if anything fails, well, it didn't lose anything because it's all replicated or duplicated or it's, it's somewhere else, maybe even three times. It's easy to, to rebuild, it's fast, and it's scalable. You can start with three, as a minimum and grow to infinity as far as you want. There are no technical limitations. There may be practical ones, but technically there are no limitations. So how does Nutanix do it? Do it yeah? They really actually employed people from Amazon and Facebook and this, and this kind of companies. So they are developing this. And that's why they have this unlimited web scale technology, as they call it. Yeah? So it's based on web technologies and it can scale, it can scale to, 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 well, as much as you want. As much as you need, really. Yeah? But it does replace everything. Main goal is not now to replace everything. Main goal is to make it scalable when you need it, easy to use, because you do not need any storage definitions here. You just say, well, from one pool of resources, which is shared, I mean, everything is shared here, I want to have that much for my group of applications. And that's it. Everything else happens in the background. You don't need to, to understand how, how is it done, because, well, why would you? I mean, after all, it's not, it shouldn't be your job. Yeah? Your job should be the, on top. Yeah? I mean, do your business, do the banking stuff. So that's the goal, and that's the main, the main idea of, uh, and main benefits and, and goodies of these technologies. Okay, that's a quick um, comparison of um, the complexity versus simplicity. <laughs> and the Nutanix on, on top has their own hypervisor. So there's also alternative here, yeah? Use existing ones if you used to, if you want to, if you have to. But if you want to save some money, maybe, on licenses, licensing, well, the AHV, as Nutanix call it, it's, uh, it's, the name is Acropolis Hypervisor, is uh, included with the, um, with the product. Um, in addition to this, you also get connect connectivity to, to Amazon, so you can use um, uh, cloud, I mean, sorry, it's not only Amazon, Amazon or Azure, Stack, Azure uh, Microsoft, or any other cloud, to be, uh, for that matter to use it as a, well, extra resource for backup, let's say, purposes, yeah, or temporary um, storage. So it's fully flexible, yeah? Support VMware, Microsoft, its own containers, and there's a management layer on top. So um, just a quick word, quick example of this um, hypervisor that Nutanix offers, and the flexibility which it, which it brings. Um, you can switch between one to, one to another. You can use, for example, Acropolis or Nutanix hypervisor for development, and one, once you're fine and ready, I mean, applications are done, you move them to the VMware environment because that's your um, productive production environment. It works, no tr <laughs> nothing else required. It does conversion on its own. Or you use Acropolis, so Nutanix-based hypervisor as a backup solution for the um, 
a disaster recovery for the primary one that is based on something else, like VMware. It's just one example. So AHV is a hypervisor of the enterprise level, and it can definitely d do everything that um, any other hypervisor can provide. A very important piece of the, the solution is also the management part. So how do you control and manage the, the resources? That's what you usually have, yeah? You have network storage, servers, applications, whatever, yeah? So with the, um, here it is. With Nutanix, you get something that's called Prism, and that's a single management interface uh, to, to manage everything. I don't know how much can you see here, really, but um, this is a summary chart that shows you how many hard, how much, what kind of hardware do you have, and then you can drill down to, to either hardware components or VM components, and you can do snapshots, and you can do whatever storage function you can think of through this management interface. And, yes, yeah, so I was talking about support and integration of our solutions before. Our systems management utility, which is called X-Clarity, also integrates into this tool, into Prism. So from Prism, you can also manage hardware hardware specifics that come from Lenovo. So not just general things, but really specific stuff, like firmware updates. And we do it our own way, just like HP or Dell, right? So nobody's doing... We all have some specifics. So we want to provide integration of these specifics to standard tools. And there's another one, there's even more, right? You get analytical... Um, analytical... Um, mechanism so that based on history you can Nutanix can help you predict your needs now compare this with anything else you, ha you will have to buy who knows how many extra applications and add add-ons to, to you know the base platform here it's all included so it's really good stuff yeah you can run anything you want on it almost anything you can run everything that, that can be virtualized Pretty much. Nutanix is today the only uh, tier one application certified platform, hyperconverged platform. So yes, you can run all Microsoft applications, you can run SAP applications here, except HANA, okay, because HANA is different, HANA is specific for the time being. But the storage part of Nutanix is fast enough and it's about to be certified for HANA. So <laughs> it's another proof that it really can do the job. Yeah? And how do you connect HANA? Well with this part here. Okay, it's not only su su suitability of the um, platform, it's also about, let's say, maybe some other reasons, like um, licensing. We all know how, how complicated is Oracle about licensing. So if you don't want to do it in a fully in a virtualized environment and then pay 10 times too much to Oracle, well, you can have external box with a minimum requirement for Oracle and connect it to Nutanix platform and use Nutanix as storage only. So it's really flexible, it's easy, it's expandable. Try it, yeah? So what do we do? Well, we provide Nutanix software as appliance installed on the, our hardware. Here's a set of, of models which each fit slightly different purpose, depending on performance and the expandability um, requirements. We add our networking switches. By the way, yes, we do have our own network, <laughs> networking switches. Low latency 10 gigabit switch is part of the solution and we support it. So we, we act as the um, single point of, of, of contact for support. To make, all make, to, to, make all, to make some sense out of the infrastructure, we also engineer solutions, real solutions. So let's take Nutanix and uh, say, okay, that's still the infrastructure. It just looks differently. It's shaped software uh, with software. Uh, so now I want to use it for, I don't know, exchange. So what now, yeah? And that's actually the way we wish to get to be approached, that anybody would come and say, hey, I want to implement Exchange mail, uh, mail, mail system for 5,000 users, so what do you have? Yeah? And then we can have a choice, right? We can go with standard, standard infrastructure, servers, storage, whatever, or we take Nutanix. And you can find this kind of information on uh, something that's called uh, lenovopress.com. <laughs> With all the details, the explanation of technology, explanation of reasons, why is it desi designed the way it is designed. Um, so I, I w welcome everybody to have a look and uh, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll find something that's also um, suitable and usable for you. So I, I said I have 15 slides, right? There's the 15. Okay, thank you.